Hello, welcome to the Humanity Leadership Podcast. I'm David Wheatley and we're here to talk all things leadership. Well, my guest this week is a returner, Scott McFarlane, CEO of Honor Credit Union, but uh, he's not quite sure what he's here to talk about this time because uh, I just said, hey, you've got an hour, uh, spend some time with me. But uh, so welcome, first of all, Scott. Thank you. Glad to be back. <laughs> That's good. We'll see if we can get your 30 uh, fans to listen to this one too. <laughs> uh, hopefully. They, hey. um, but my reason for bringing you on is I've, uh, I know I've talked to you in the past about a concept I have about one of the most challenging leadership transitions is when you go metaphorically from quarterback to coach. And it's that time when you go from being in the action uh, really a manager of doers to being a, a leader of leaders, uh, the higher up the organization and what that transition is. And I kept thinking, I'm, I'm here wearing my Leeds United football shirt, but it's the wrong kind of football. And I thought, who can I have on that would help me with the right kind of football in this instance, uh, the American version, with this idea of quarterback to coach. So, <laughs> well, I appreciate that. And as a, as a coach of um, American football, as you like to refer to it, I, <clears throat> my, my big theory is get anybody on the field and teach them to compete. And you're, you're going to have that much better of a, um, probably a worker, um, a, a competitor, uh, somebody that gets creative. Because as you know firsthand, sport creates immediate change and challenge that sometimes you don't have the time to sit down and figure all out. You have to uh, make, cha make changes on the spot and quickly. So... Uh, there's no doubt about it, no matter what the sport. And you and I like to go back and forth on the, the correct football. Uh, but in the end, um, the things you can learn through those sports, and especially going from that player to coach, uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of great life lessons that can take place during that, that time. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons to chat, because you know, you, I, I love the idea of sports really helps develop people as individuals and as team players and everything else. And if you think in your organization, you get a bunch of people who are playing the game, who are, in your case, uh, working the teller window or marketing or answering the, the call uh, in the call center. Uh, and then they get promoted to become the supervisor of that area somewhere along the line. And, and so they still probably have their hands in the till, literally, uh, working the, the teller window from time to time. But they also have some responsibility for leading. But then that next transition, when they go from being the supervisor of doers to the supervisor of supervisors, the leader of leaders, if you like, is quite often when I end up raising this idea of you've gone from being the quarterback who uh, in the American football terms is right in the middle of the game, is you know the hero when everything goes right, and controls everything on the field, literally, and the spotlight is on him in this case, uh, to being the coach. And as a coach, you only get praised when, you know, occasionally when you win, but mostly you get the blame when you lose. You're not on the field, uh, you're out watching and you're thinking about what you're going to do in practice or how you're going to change the team at the quarter or what practice you're going to do next week so that you can better, better prepare for the next game. That transition in business terms is quite a challenging one because the natural tendency is for the coach to start running on the field and barging the new quarterback out of the way and picking up the ball. Is that something you see? Without a doubt, it's extremely difficult. And even uh, firsthand, ex firsthand experience, I mean, uh, my history, I was, I, was a, I was a floating teller when I got into business. And I've had the, I've been blessed to have an opportunity to do a lot of the different, say different places on the team to play. And um, that, that quarterback position, when you're out there and you're making those calls, you're still dependent on the, the larger game plan. And the game plan is coming from that coach in the sideline and the assistant coaches. And um, while you do have that authority to make decisions on the field, in the end, you know it's a lot of preparation and work that goes into it. So making that move from the player uh, even in, the, in, in my career or our careers, I think you see that. You go from the player who's, who's got that vision to that first day when you're sitting in the chair. And in my case, when I was first day sitting in the chair um, as the CEO of Honor Credit, and I suddenly like you realize like, oh, wow, if we don't win this game, it's all on me. Um, when you're the quarterback, you say, okay, it was this. And not that you want to place blame, but there's other things that came into play, including what might be a, a a week game plan. 
So shifting that transition and getting that mindset in there, um, it, it, it takes, it takes um, a different type of thinking. So uh, my best example is when the first time I ever coached, I coached uh, peewee football. They call it rocket football. And when I coached it, the first year I coached it, I coached it like I was a player. And I won one game. And I quickly realized that that doesn't work anymore. And the, I think when you see that going from a quarterback, because even great coaches um, in any sport, if they were great players, they have to take a whole nother leap to be a great coach. And some of it is leaving behind what made you a great player. Some of those quick on the spot decisions, they're still there, but you have to plan and, and forecast and look out into the future a little bit more, maybe even a lot more at times. Not to mention taking into consideration, as you've pointed out in the past, the amplification of a head coach versus a quarterback is another level up. Right. Um, so, because because so they're when, encompassing everything. Yeah. Um, when Let's go back to that when you took over as a CEO. Mm -hmm. So you come in and how tempting was it to get out there on the field and run the plays? Oh, um, you mean I wasn't supposed to? <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the transition. Um, every once in a while, you fall back into that, that I'm going to run this play. I can take care of this. I got this. And I think those that those competitors um, in a sport type environment are the same competitors in the business type environment or the work type environment. Um, there's that little edge that always makes you want to jump back on the field if it's something you love and you enjoy. And it's hard. That's an adrenaline rush. I mean, you felt it. I felt it. It's like when you're actually in the game, playing the game, and you took part in that play that got you that score, man, that's an adrenaline rush. Probably even more so than when you're standing on the sidelines for the first time going, well, they did a great job. I guess I was part of it somehow. I just hope we win so, so that, um, that they, everybody leaves me alone and they talk to how what a great win it was. And I so think that's I, the, the challenge of this concept, though, isn't it? That the adrenaline much. rush of being on the field that you had because whatever you were, you were good at doing the previous job. And then you get elevated to the next job, which is very different to the previous job. The thing that you got the adrenaline rush for that you were known as the best of. And now you're on the coach. You're on the sidelines on the, as the coach. The temptation is to just step on the field and show. It is. Very much so, and and that's and and you quickly realize that demoralizes the team. Um, the team suddenly realizes, and and one of the most uh, some of, some of the best feedback I got um, from my from my team in the past, and this was many years ago, was that they really appreciated it when I set the path and set the set to kind of the vision, but then I stepped away and let people do their jobs right. to get it done because it showed that they were able to lead the team, down, lead the plays down the field, get things taken care of, as we had talked about, um, <laughs> rather than me jumping in all the time, it's like, hey, did you do this right? Hey, did you do that right? So uh, and while it's difficult, it's extremely Im important, um, at least from my perspective, is making that transition, even though that urge will always be there because we do what we love in many cases, uh, if, if, that urge is, if that urge is there, it's fighting that back and saying, okay, let's let, let's let this run. And um, obviously you're gonna inspect what you expect. And a lot of the inspection is gonna come at the end result. Right. Um, and that's a different level of satisfaction. Suddenly when you, when you encounter that as, as the head coach, um, you've, you realize that you actually are watching people achieve success um, in by working a plan and a vision that you and your assistant coaches, so to speak, or maybe your, your leadership team and your managers, they're, they're achieving success through plans that were put together and built um, as a team uh, uh, for the future. So yeah. it, it, it is, that's a very sad, it's a different kind of satisfaction, um, but one that I have learned to enjoy immensely as you see, um, as you see an organization grow, but then as you see other team members grow too because here's the thing if you're always the quarterback or in my case the starting lineman um, nobody ever gets a chance to start if you aren't willing to give up that spot mm -hmm. and there comes a time when it's time to transition into a new role 
and it gives other people a chance to do um, to achieve success in that role that they would have otherwise not be able to. Um, if you aren't, and, and we all know, right, David, you know as well as I do. Um, you stay in one of those spots too long, no matter how much you love the game, it, it, it's probably going to catch up with you somewhere along the way. Yeah. And I think that goes to why I use this analogy so much because uh, and I still, I don't know if this is still as relevant as it was, but if Tom Brady, you know, is the best quarterback out there, suddenly one day becomes the coach, he's still the best quarterback, but it's Correct. no longer his job. His job is actually to make the next quarterback better than him. And, and that's this leap that, uh, that a lot of people struggle with in leadership is going from that, I'm, I'm in the heart of it, I am the quarterback, I am the superstar, to now I'm the coach, where my job is to create the superstars beneath me. And the feeling, as you identified, is different. If I'm the quarterback and I make that play, everybody comes up, hugs and kisses me, everything else. If I'm the coach and I set that in motion, I'm seeing everybody else get celebrated for it. And I just have to have that warm feeling inside that we did this right. And, and that transition itself so it requires you to put your ego heavily to one side, which again is challenging if I'd been the superstar previously. Absolutely. But, but letting that go and letting somebody else come in and letting somebody else potentially fail and, and potentially asking them the questions that help them work out what's happening is the, is the new role. Uh, but it's not a half as exciting as it felt like when you were playing quarterback. Well, and some of it is you've given up control, to your point. That excitement <clears throat> is that control component. And when when you are playing that and you are taking that lead role on the field, you are taking an active role in, in getting the job done uh, versus the coach that is taking more of a secondary role, uh, has laid out the plan, has laid out the vision, has laid out the goals, but is taking a secondary role and doesn't actually get to take the actions to achieve the results necessarily is, is extremely dependent on the team he has put together and the leadership on the field and the prep work. So even that is a big piece of it. You know, the prep work is extremely different from being the quarterback on the field to being the coach on the sideline. Um, the quarterback in the field is prepping, prepping for one event, one game, one set of criteria. Um, Whereas the coach on the sideline is looking now, I have to be ready for this game. I have to learn from the last game, be ready for this game, be prepared for the next game and two games down the road. Because if I only look at one game, then I'm not going to, um, I'm not, we have to achieve results maybe above and beyond even what they know about in the field in order for us to continue to be successful for the, for the week after and the week after and the week after. And when you look at that in a, in a management type role from you go from being the doer and the getting it done and the quarterback in the organization to suddenly being the head coach of the organization, you're like, you, you have to realize that those things that were wins for you at one point that those, those aren't enough. And um, that, that, that's, uh, it's scary. It's exciting. There's a lot of adrenaline. <laughs> um, it pushes you beyond the boundaries of what you'd normally uh, would be thinking about and doing. Uh, but it also causes you to do great things in terms of collaborate. And I think the one, the common bond be, be with all of this is in the end, if you can maintain the passion that you had on the field as the quarterback, and that same passion carries on to the sidelines, that passion and that drive and that energy, that is something that if you um, refine it, uh, that's something that you can carry from the field to the sidelines. And then that should be contagious in many different ways mm -hmm. to help a team succeed and, set, and see the vision for the long term. Which is, you know, you're, you're raising that. I go from my vision is this game and that this level of thinking to my vision is now the season and maybe this season and next season depending on whether it's a building season or what. And I do recognize that we're both using he when we talk about the coach. And I think we're a week past the first ever NFL game that had a female coach on both sides and a female referee. So I want to make sure uh, we're, we're not just uh, check ourselves on that piece. Yeah, because absolutely. It doesn't matter what your gender or however you look comes in that it's this transition from being in the thick of the action to being the guide of that action. Uh, so what's a, what's a couple of things that you've seen that help that transition for people? Um, one, of, one of them, I mean, ironically, is um, what you learn from losing. And uh, uh, I think that 
when as a player or a coach, I think we see um, different people take different things away from a loss and um, what you learn from it, how you reset yourself for the next competition. Um, that that's a great learning opportunity and the scope of it is much, it, it varies. So one from one game to the next, um, as you're taking it up that next level, um, you don't want a lot of losses, obviously, that's not the goal, but what you can take away and learn from a loss to prepare for it, I think is um, extremely valuable. Um, the other part of that transition, I think is um, being open and honest and like, having some humility. Um, surrounding yourself with really smart people that can do have expertise in other areas. Um, it's the same on the field when you're on the field. It's what you just said. I mean, um, the women that are coaching in the NFL are doing it because of their spectacular expertise and what they bring to the field and what they bring to the table. Um, man, woman, um, doesn't matter in the end, what is the expertise and do you, how do you surround yourself with the best expertise um, knowing that when you're on the field, you have to have the best linemen, the best running backs, the best receivers to be a great quarterback. Um, I always say that a quarterback is nothing without an incredible line. It's the same as when you take that next step, but you have to make sure, I think one of the transition pieces is making sure you realize that if you surround yourself with just great players and don't people that haven't made, you know, haven't moved on to, we have to set the vision for more developing more great players and teams um, surrounding yourself with those people that have made that leap and see and get that intrinsic value from other people succeeding, maybe than just them succeeding, thus the humility um, is, a, is a key component of making that next step into a successful player to coach career. Um, yeah. and, and that's a tough one. It's hard to be, um, that humility component can be very difficult because um, you know what's on the line. Um, you know the, the risk factors and uh, sometimes it's it's like okay I gotta let go of this and I gotta the other thing you gotta do is let people I gotta be open enough and vulnerable enough to let people tell me I don't have the right ideas and it's not the right direction and but here's the plan that could make us even more successful. So if I again take that back into the business world if I'm a a marketing leader, vice president or whatever, and, and I look at those two things that you talked about, if my marketing uh, plan doesn't quite work, the temptation is because I used to be the quarterback to get back on the field and do the next one myself. And, and what you're talking about in that learning is not just how the coach, in this case, the marketing VP is learning from that, but how the people are learning from that, the players by given that opportunity to say, okay, that didn't work. This is the result. Let's look at what we're going to do to make it work as we move forward. Doing, having that kind of interaction, that conversation uh, tells you whether the team's going to work or not. But that, that's challenging for the coach because the coach may well know. <laughs> we, we always have dogs and cats on the show. Yeah, this, one, the dog yeah, this, this dog is, on, is in the show. So just letting she's the dog dying, out. She's, she's <laughs> dying to get out. <laughs> so so if, if the coach just steps in then and starts playing quarterback again, then you've lost an opportunity. Uh, and that, yeah, for a, especially for a new coach or a new VP of marketing, that's a temptation, isn't it, to jump straight back on the field. And then I think the second point they made that vulnerability, that humility, that to recognize that I didn't do this right is quite often a challenge for the coach because if the, if the quarterback keeps getting sacked, then what did I as the coach not do in training to prevent that from happening. And, you know, if I'm the VP of marketing, what didn't I do to set this project up well so that my team could be successful? And I think you nailed it right there. One of the things we always talk about it and on, <clears throat> as we call it, our coaching staff um, at Honor is uh, when we see something going wrong, the first place, first place we need to go looking for an answer is in the mirror. Um, so what, what was the plan? What, how was it communicated? Are we sharing our passion and excitement and are you giving the critical information so that people have the tools, they have all the tools that they're supposed to be successful, knowing that in the end, people are still self, they're still accountable for their own job. They're accountable for their own, for their own performance. Um, the key being, did we as a team do everything possible to, um, 
give them an opportunity for success. And I think that's when you see teams that are well prepared, you see coaches that are very confident and confident there and then they're prepared. They don't, they're not going to show you their lack of confidence. Um, but behind the scenes, that's when the humility and the vulnerability has to take place because you've got to be able to be open and direct with each other. Um, or there will be, I mean, it's inherent failure. Um, there will be, there'll be, there'll be struggles on the field. There'll be struggles uh, within the group itself. Um, and to your point, if in your VP of marketing example or VP of whatever, even the CEO, um, if I keep running on the field and saying, let me just take this, um, in the end, how long does that probably future star athlete or future star employee uh, put up with this before they go, uh, you just, you kind of want to see, you're kind of a CEO wannabe, you still want to be on the field. And you can't get past the fact that you were the greatest of all time and you're not anymore. Um, and that's sometimes, at, le at least in the quarterback, that doesn't mean you can't be. So making a commitment, I think as a leader in an organization and making that commitment, sticking to it, and then finding that, um, uh, I'll say, um, that circle where you can get some honest and direct feedback. Um, some of it's from your team. Um, some of it's from peers on the outside that are going to give you some insights and some um, very direct and honest feedback is, hey, are you, you going to keep running on the field? Because it's getting embarrassing. Um, we, we really got to stop that. Not to mention, you don't run very fast. And yeah. Well, get, get yourself a coach. No, that's, that's yeah, a there you go. There, there, there. If you're really looking for this opportunity, <laughs> your manager would be a great, please call. <laughs> but they, I, and I think you're, you're raising um, uh, some solid points there that this, uh, this transition continues to happen. So even if I'm the vice president of marketing, then uh, there's a chance I'll get promoted to be the chief executive officer. And now I've gone from being the quarterback to the coach again. Exactly. Uh, because if I get in the head of the new vice president of marketing or in their space, then I'm undermining them. Uh, and one of the exercises that I've found successful sometimes is to, especially if it's an internal promotion, is to get people as they get that promotion to write down everything they did as the vice president of marketing write it down on a piece of paper, give it to the vice president of marketing and don't do it anymore <laughs> because that's no longer your job. And it's yep. that, that physical transition of this. This is no longer mine and keep it a copy of it so that you know when you're breaching it and ask the new vice president of marketing, if I ever step onto this field, I want you to let me know I'm stepping onto the field. Now, the, the flip side of this is because some people, when I bring this up, they say, well, hang on a minute. I, I think it's great when you get down on the ground floor and work from time to time. And, and I know you've done it. You've worked to tell a window as the CEO. Mm -hmm. And I think that's different because if you're doing it as the CEO and with that CEO lens, you're not really looking to get everything right in that teller window. You're looking to see what the big picture patterns are and what's happening. So it's the same as the, the coach steps on the field next to the quarterback to say, you're telling me there's a gap in the line. I'm going to stand here and in practice and look to see where that gap is because it's useful to me to be in that space so that then I know what I can go and tactically take care of. I think you nailed it right there. And, and you brought up a, uh, a key point, which is practice. Um, <laughs> too, too, too many times, I mean, we study for our tests in school, we practice for our sports, our band, our choir, whatever it may be, we practice. Uh, sometimes when we get into the working world, we forget about practice and we think it's just gonna automatically um, just be okay. This is just going to magic, magically you're going to be okay. Um, but you have, as, um, as somebody transitioning into a leadership role, even if somebody wants to be in a leadership role someday, that practice is key. So stepping on the field while in practice, I think is important. And I think the other part is, is if, you know, you've heard me say, if I tell you the truth, can we still be friends? And if I, if your friend can't tell you the truth and you're not going to be open to it, then it's going to be a very long, tumultuous coaching career because you're not open to suggestions and ideas and, and ways of looking at things differently. So from that side, I think that practice is a key point that people forget about and sometimes get overly sensitive to like, hey, this is just practice. Let's, let's get it right. Um, and in, in the working world and in our, you know, in the business side, that's, that's team training, that's one-on-one -on -one training, that's coaching. That's me working a teller window and saying, hey, have you ever thought about doing this way? Oh my gosh, he's just, told, I must be doing it wrong. And like, no, stop, <laughs> stop. 
All I asked is, and you can tell me, yeah, I have thought about doing it that way. And it's dumb because A, B, C, D. Oh, great. So I can get some coaching. You know, coaching goes both ways. You get, you learn a lot from a player too, because if you're a coach, one of the most common questions you ask is, is there anything out there you see that we're not seeing? Is there anything you can't handle? Are things going like we planned? <laughs> and most of the players, a lot of the players that are leaders on the field say, oh, no, no, this is happening or this changed or, well, we weren't ready for this. That guy is really fast or that we didn't know that we didn't know she could fly down the field and catch the ball. So in the end, you're always getting that dialogue back and forth. And um, if you're, if you're not, but if you're the quarterback, you're not necessarily in that dialogue role because you're not looking to, for the future. You're looking like, Hey, how do I get the job done today? So that's, that's a big transition, I think, and important. The practice part is important. The other thing we like to talk about is film work. And we use our film work because, you know, any great coach studies and really takes a, takes film apart to say, oh, what do we do right? What do we do wrong? And, you know, well, that's not it's it's a difficult situation because I don't ever remember going to film when I played and everybody going, oh, Scott, every once in a while, you go, hey, that was a great fly. It was a great tackle. Most of the times like, oh, you could have done this better, this better, this better, this better. So yeah. there is a balance, obviously. Um, but I think if you go into the environment and if you're a coach that set, that basically says our goal is constant improvement, not to beat you down, not to make you look bad, not to beat you up. It is this constant improvement that we are constantly get better every single day. And to do that, we have to be open and honest with one another to make sure that we're, we all see the end goal and we're all working to achieve it. So if I were to capture a few things that you say, Hey, we first have to recognize that we're no longer should be on the field. Our, our job is coach now, not quarterback, and hand over the role of the quarterback. We have to be willing to communicate back and forth and learn from each other either way and make sure we're, we're studying that well. We have to be uh, humble about where we are. Uh, there's a humility to it. And we have to put our ego to one side a little bit because we're not going to be in the spotlight anymore when we move to that coaching position. It's not going to be the, the heart of the game like and uh, at every step you're going to uh, be making this transition from being at the heart of the game the quarterback to being the coach uh, and it's a, a challenge for all of us I think is uh, and I think the, the last thing you said there was game film and you and I have talked about the idea of reviewing game film at work and which is really saying well let's just work through what happened and let's look at what happened and let's dissect it a bit like what the army call an after action review Right. which is we take all of our rank off and we have an honest conversation about how it went so that we can learn to apply it to next time because it's that uh, humility uh, and honesty and transparency that allows us to really get the most learning to get the highest performance as we move on. Scott, thanks thanks for having a chat about something you weren't quite sure what we were going to be chatting about. <laughs> hey, it's always, I, I love to coach. It's it's a passion. I love, I love coaching. I, I still do it um, junior high football every day. And um, I am constantly um, humbled by the intelligence and the vision of those around and the coaches that I coach with. And, and even in, even in honor as you know, that's what I see it is you see that transition, you go from being the doer to the coach and um, you've got to constantly be um, open to new ideas and suggestions and, and constantly question yourself. Did I set, did I set a game plan in place? Did we set a game plan in place together? that is going to allow us to achieve success. And if there are failures or there are losses along the way, um, what did we do and how can we work together to overcome those to be successful? And in our case for our members so that um, they can continue to find financial success. So it is, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's never a, um, it's never the same thing every day, which that's one of the fun parts of it. Scott McFallon, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you. You've been listening to the Humanity Leadership Podcast. I'm David Wheatley, and we're brought to you by the book, What Great Teams Do Great, available now at all good bookstores. Thanks to Brian Spencer and Finkel for the music. Please share any feedback and suggestions. I'm available through humanity.com. And uh, go to iTunes, like, subscribe, and leave us a review so that other people can find us. In the meantime, until next time we meet, stay healthy.